1. A little background on this story. First, I have a fairly decent car for it being so old. 16-year-old Dodge Neon SE. And I have zero interest in getting anything different since it's reliable, still gets great gas mileage, is completely paid off and handles great. It's blue with a massive rust spot on the rear passenger side, just above the gas tank. But I don't care. It gives the car character, you know? Second, this story takes place in Michigan. Whereas anyone who lives here or has driven through here knows, the roads suck. Potholes, uneven streets, and jagged pavement on every stretch of road you'll ever drive down. Getting a flat tire at least once in your life while driving here is both a guarantee and a rite of passage. The flat tire detail is relevant. EP equals entitled parent slash entitled psycho. EB entitled brat slash entitled bitch. DO dealership owner. And me equals me. I was driving through town after my shift at work and had to take a really shitty street because that's all I had available to me. I do my best to avoid potholes, but I end up striking a few anyway, and lo and behold, my rear driver's side tire takes a hit. I can feel that something's wrong with the tire, so I pull off the road into the nearest open drive I could find. Turns out I picked a used car lot and had plenty of room to inspect the damage. When I step out of the car to look at the tire, Another car pulls into the lot behind me and proceeds to park on the other side. I noticed that the tire was low but not flat, because fortunately, that pothole only loosened the seal on the stem valve and I could fix that with the can of Fix-A-Flat that I kept in my trunk. While I'm fussing with my tire, the dealership owner comes out to greet me, most likely assuming I'm here to either trade in my car or shop around. When he sees my tire is low, he insists I, slowly, pull my car further away from the side of the road and up toward the front of the dealership building out of safety concerns. I agree and move my car where instructed. Turns out I was being watched by a dreaded entitled parent and her demonic spawn. Not long after I get my car moved up, the DO was lending me a hand and helping with my tire, making sure the valve was secured and that the pressure was stable. I thanked him for his help and proceeded to sit back down in my car, as I put the key in the ignition, I hear something bang against my window and look up to see a woman, the stereotypical Karen, trying to get my attention. I roll my window down to see what she wants. My bad. Yeah, what's up? Are you through yet? Am I... what? Through. Are you through because my daughter's been waiting long enough? I look past her and see her 16-year-old daughter dressed in a dark miniskirt white tank top that showed everything, and four-inch heels. This is February, by the way. She was also wearing so much cheap makeup you'd think she was auditioning for a role as the Joker. Waiting for what? Don't act cute. She needs her turn. You've taken up enough of our time. What are you talking about? Are you stupid? Your test drive is over. Now it's entitled Bitch's turn. The EB is standing behind her EP with her arms crossed over her chest and giving me a smug Wow, are all you commoners so stupid? type of grin on her arrogant face. Oh, I figure it out quick and try to defuse the situation. I wasn't on a test drive, I own. I said get out! This is my car. No, it's not. I just saw you pull back into the lot. We were behind you the whole time, so don't try to lie to me. I wasn't... You didn't even go inside the building to sign the papers, so I know you're lying to me. You didn't buy this car, you're just being a stubborn little bitch. No, this is my car, I have the regis- What the fuck is wrong with you? Get out, now! No, this is my car. No, it's not. My daughter wants it, and I'm going to buy it for her right now. She tried to pull open my door, but thankfully I locked it when I got inside. Give me the key! Before I had the chance to say anything else, she reached through my window and made a grab for the key in the ignition. The key that was on a key ring with my apartment key and four other keychains. So, clearly not the dealership's key. When she tried to pull it out, I grabbed her arm and pushed her back. Get away! You little bitch! You just assaulted me! I quickly roll up my window, and I'm ready to turn over the engine and drive off, when I see Dio returning. Ma'am, what's going on? This little whore just assaulted me. 
Call the police. She attacked me because I told her to let my daughter have a test drive, and now she's trying to steal the car. The Dio looks at me, looks at my worn-out, dirty car with the faded bumper sticker on the trunk, and gives the woman the classic, Are you serious right now, stare? Ma'am, this car isn't for sale. This is her car. No, it's not. Until she signs the paper, it's not hers, and my daughter wants to drive it. She just got her license, and I promised her I'd get her a blue car. This is the only blue car in the lot. It was not. There was another blue car parked behind her, and yes, her 16-year-old daughter who just got her license was going to test drive a car in heels. Double WTF. Ma'am, this car isn't mine to sell. It already belongs to her. No, it doesn't! I saw her drive the car onto the lot, and I saw you telling her to pull up to the building. Stop trying to lie to me! She had a low tire. She pulled off. Why won't you let my daughter have her turn? She deserves to have her turn! Is it because my daughter isn't all slutted up like this whore? Note what the daughter was wearing, and I am wearing blue jeans, tennis shoes, a baggy t-shirt with Kirby, Nintendo on it, and a green jacket over top. The only skin visible is on my hands, neck, and face. Ma'am, stop. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. No! My daughter needs this car! I promised her, and all you're doing is wasting my time! I'm asking you nicer to leave before I call the cops. You do that, and I'm telling the cops that this bitch assaulted me, pushed my daughter, and you're selling stolen cars. Now give my daughter this car right now, or else! She actually said, or else, like a damn cartoon villain. Ma'am? Leave. This is ridiculous. She pulled her phone from her purse and proceeded to call the cops herself. You're going to regret being so disrespectful to me. All you had to do was sell me this car, but no, you decided this whore was better than my daughter. My daughter deserves this car. I know I am not in the wrong, but I'm still nervous. I look at the D.O. through the windshield and he gives me a look that says everything will be fine. Watch this. About five minutes later, a patrol car pulls up and the officer approaches the D.O. Before he even has the chance to ask any questions, the E.P. starts shrieking at him at full volume. I want that! Bitch arrested. She assaulted me and my daughter, and she's trying to steal my daughter's car. The cop is unfazed and just looks over at me, then over to the D.O. without blinking. Hey, Andy, is this true? Not a word of it, and if you want you can check the lost security cameras, Dave. The E.P. is fuming, and the E.B. is just rolling her eyes like we're boring her or some shit. Why don't you believe me? You're not seriously going to take her word over mine. Just... Look at her! Ma'am, I need to get both sides of the story. Now, you said she tried to steal. Yes, that's my daughter's car. Alright, fine. That's easy enough to prove. The cop walked over to the passenger side of the door, on the opposite side from where the EP was still seething, and motioned for me to open the door. I did, and he of course asked for my ID, my registration, and my proof of insurance. It didn't take the cop long to notice my name on the license and the name on the registration, which was also dated from almost two years ago, are a match. He just nods, hands me back my stuff, and closes the door. Ma'am, that's her car. Not possible. She just got here. She couldn't have signed the papers. Why are you all against my daughter? She needs a car! Ma'am, you do realize it's a crime to try to file a false police report? This car isn't stolen, and I seriously doubt she assaulted you. I'm going to look at the cameras, and if I find that you're lying to me... E.P. grabbed E.B.'s arm and pulled her along. Fuck this place. All these cars are pieces of shit anyway. My daughter deserves better than anything that slut would ever drive. The cop sticks around until the E.P. leaves, apologizes to me for the disturbance, and wishes me a good day. Before he left, he said bye to the D.O., again calling him by his first name, and was on his way. Don't worry about her, I don't think she'll be back. And if she does show up again, my brother, the cop, will be back too. After slipping me a business card, joking that if I ever need another car in the near future, he'd ensure that no crazy people were hiding in the trunk. I thanked the man for coming to my rescue, drove off, and I've been trying to figure out why my old car was so important to the E.P. ever since. Seriously, it's not that great of a car. Old, losing its pep, and needing some TLC. But I still love my blue bastard. 
2. When I was in college, I worked part-time at an antique bookstore, owned by a man I knew from a college society. It was a cute, if cramped little place, but I loved working that way. The owner was a really cool guy, and I got to come into contact with some truly amazing books. Now, these stories all revolve around a second edition copy of Jane Austen's 1811 novel, Sense and Sensibility, valued at £12,000, and one entitled Family's Eventual Criminal Attempt to Take Possession of It. Chapter 1. Lowball. Me, O-P-E-M, entitled Mom, E-K, entitled Kid, B, Boss. It was a lazy Friday afternoon, and since I had no lectures, I was putting in a few hours at the bookshop. I had done a few deals, but nothing more than a few hundred pounds. My boss was in the back, excitedly examining a new purchase of his, and I was manning the shop. Enter the entitled family. A mother and daughter combination, with the trademark sneer of someone who believes they are superior to almost everyone else on the planet. They browse for a few minutes, selecting a few titles from the shelves before approaching the desk. At this point, we had just acquired the copy of Sense and Sensibility, and we were proudly displaying it in a desktop glass case at the till. Technically, it was for sale, but we really just liked having it. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Mummy, I'm bored. Just a moment, darling. Mummy will be just a moment. But I'm bored. Go play for a moment and then we can go get ice cream. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm going to have to ask you to keep your daughter supervised. Nonsense! My daughter is very well behaved. I'm sure she is, ma'am. But we have had problems with children damaging the books in the past, so we just ask parents to supervise their children. Well, my daughter is not like that young man. She can do what she wants. There is a ripping from the shelves. I give E.M. a look. We move over and discover that E.K. has torn a page out of a copy of Graham Greene's The Comedian's first edition, valued at £15, and is now doodling on said torn page with a crayon. Well, I'll add that to your purchase. Why? Your daughter damaged it and has greatly reduced its value, so I'm sorry, but you will have to pay for it. No, I won't. If you don't, I'll have to report a case of criminal damage to the police. I point to the security camera. It's £15. Let's not have to do that. We take the book over to the till and add it to the purchase. At this point, EM notices sense and sensibility. How much is that? That is £12,000, ma'am. Oh, £12,000? That's ridiculous. Look at how old and battered it is. Ma'am, that is a second edition in near pristine condition. It is a very rare find, and £12,000 is a very good price for it. Well, I need a present for my husband's birthday. I will give you £60 for it. I'm sorry, ma'am, but that book is £12,000. It is not. You're just a greedy salesperson who wants to make some money. Boss! After a moment, my boss comes out of his office. What's up? Could you tell this lady how much the Austin costs? Twelve thousand pounds, but we'd be willing to do eleven thousand five hundred. One hundred and fifty. I'm sorry. One hundred and fifty. No, I'm sorry. We can't sell it to you for one hundred and fifty. EM starts angrily putting the books I have put through the till into a bag. Well, I will be sure to tell my friends what con artist you are. Have a nice day, Mom. EM and EK leave in a huff. B and I have a laugh about this. Chapter 2. The Lawyer from London Me, OP, SL, Surprise Lawyer. A little later in the day, I am rearranging some shelves when a smartly dressed young man comes in and calls for assistance. Good afternoon, sir. How can I help you? Yes, I am a lawyer. My client wishes to lay claim to one of your books. It was stolen from her family many years ago, and we've been made aware that your store is in possession of the book. What is the book? Sense and Sensibility. Oh no, I think to myself. 
Of course, sir. Do you have the relevant documentation to prove ownership? No. But I do have a statement of ownership. He hands me a printout of a Word document, which basically says, We, the Chancer family, own this copy of Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. You know, a very legally binding document. I'm very sorry, sir, but this document cannot prove that the Chancer family owns the book. Sir, you would not want me to sue this store, would you? If this is your evidence, I welcome your claim, and I am sure we will raise it with a countersuit of fraud. The SL opens his mouth to speak, but chooses to retreat instead. Chapter 3. The Heist Towards closing, there is a very loud car horn outside our store, followed by a scream. My boss and I hurry outside to find a little girl has been hit by a car. We rush forwards, my boss being a volunteer paramedic. After a moment, I recognize that the girl is E.K. and my boss recognizes that this girl is not injured. That's when we hear the shatter from behind us. I look behind us, and through the store window, I see S.L. pilfering the Austin. As my boss confronts the driver, I rush back into the store and confront the S.L. He breaks down and reveals himself to be E.M.'s older child. He tries to make it out of the store, but I stop him. The police are called. Epilogue. We took the family to court. They were found guilty on attempted fraud and an attempted theft. It turned out that E.D., entitled Dad, was the driver of the car and had set up a little play of sorts to distract us. E.M. and E.D. received suspended sentences of 24 months due to the value of the item they tried to steal, with the sentences suspended due to their young daughter. Their reasoning was insane. The family turned out to be fairly wealthy, and had bragged to other wealthy friends about owning a first edition Jane Austen. When the friends wanted to see the Austen, the family set out to find one on the cheap. When that failed, they happened upon our store. 3. For some context, the place I used to work at was in the city near Broadway and the Empire State Building, a very tourist-heavy area. My job dealt with important documents, fingerprints, visas, expedited information, and other boring crap. We usually had big-shot clients, celebrities, athletes of all kind, and city elites show up for our services. Most of them are pretty entitled, and with good reason. This all went on Friday after a long day of BS. It was almost closing time, and the office was empty except for me and a fellow co-worker and good friend. The majority of our appointments were done or no-shows, except for the last three, 4.50, 5, and 5.10. So me and my co-worker were cleaning up and bullshitting so we could leave at 5.20 at the most. It was almost 5, and it seemed no one else was going to show up. We had everything cleaned up and ready to GTFO. That's when Entitled Mother and her child show up. Shit. So close. This lady looked like your stereotypical Karen. That iconic haircut. Big earrings, middle-aged, expensive handbag, shades even though it's cloudy outside, blonde-dyed hair, and, most likely, in a struggling marriage. She walks into the office and heads straight to our reception counter. Her son follows in and takes a seat in the empty waiting room. He looks to be eight, maybe ten. My co-worker says, Hello, how can I help you today? Yeah, I'm here for a five o'clock appointment. Sure, I'm just gonna need to see your ID and your method of payment. And may I ask what you are here for? We knew there was only one five appointment. But we still ask for IDs just to be safe. And we also ask our clients what they're here for since we only have their name and appointment time. They have to let us know what they need to get done. E.M. hands over her ID and credit card. I don't know what I'm here for. My boss made an appointment for me and just said to show up on time. Coworker confirms that she's the legit five client. Sorry ma'am, I can't really help you if you don't know what you're here for. What job is it for? This happens far too often for my liking. People showing up with appointments they scheduled and planned after a two month waiting list only to show up and not know what it's for. It basically turns into a detective game of us trying to figure out what they need. If not, they'd risk paying for the wrong service and having to come back again. 
I don't know. Sheesh. Aren't you guys supposed to know? I'm probably here for my visa to Israel. Probably? Why don't you call your boss and ask? EM rolls her eyes and pulls out her phone. During this time, I look at her ID and credit card. It's one of those black azure cards big shots have. Made out of real metal and shit. She's obviously rolling in serious dough. EM steps off to the side while on the phone speaking with her boss. I glance over at her kid who's seated and hasn't said a word this whole time. He has his school bag on and looks melancholy and is staring at our TV, which is on Fox News or some garbage. He proceeds to open his bag and take out toys. I immediately recognize them. They're Pokemon and a Spider-Man figure. Man of culture, I see, I think to myself as I grin, reminiscing about my own childhood. So then five minutes pass or so, and this lady is still on the phone, arguing and pacing. I literally have my coat on. As soon as we're done with this chick, we're out of here. That's when someone else enters the office, a tall, handsome guy, a real 9 out of 10. I immediately stand from my chair and tell my co-worker I got this. Hello, how can I help you? Yeah, hi. I'm here for so-and-so. I got a bit lost and my appointment was at 4.30. No worries, I'll take you now. I'll need your ID and a method of payment. You can also follow me. I take the guy to one of our cubicles and fill out the paperwork and help him with whatever needs to be done. At the same time, my co-worker is still in the front arguing with entitled mom who seems to still be on the phone. I'm making small talk with this guy, but also listening to the conversation up in front. My co-worker is still somewhat of a newbie and might need help. I'm almost done with my client, and I hear EM getting heated and yelling, I'm here for a visa. I was told to come here at 5. I was never told I needed to bring my passport too. Sorry ma'am, I can't help you if you don't have your passport with you. Do you have a birth certificate or marriage certificate? Then maybe we can help you. No. I didn't bring those either. I'm divorced. Good grief, I'm thinking to myself. She's probably sapping her ex-husband's money through child support and alimony. Poor guy. I finish up quickly with the 9 out of 10 guy and send him off. I head back to the front desk to see what's up. My co-worker gives me the rundown. EM needs a visa for Israel, which requires additional steps and procedures. She can't come back another day with her passport because she has a flight soon or something. In this situation, we literally can't help her. Which is what my co-worker is trying to explain. But we also can't just send her away. If my boss found out we denied a big shot client, he'll have our heads on a plate. When do you close today? I look at the clock. No. I don't live far from here. Can I leave my son and come back? I'll be quick. Sorry, ma'am. We close now, but you can come in first thing Monday morning. We can reserve a spot. I really don't want to stay here another minute and on top of that have to babysit some kid I just met. I'll have to explain to my boss why we sent her away. Probably get chewed out a bit, but I don't give a fuck. What can we do? She has no passport. Me and co-worker have plans to go out, open cold ones with the boys. We can't just sit here for who knows how long. Not happening. Then why did you help the young man first? He came in after me, and you helped him quick. She points at me with a wide-eyed glance. That's true, but he knew what he was here for and had the appropriate documentation. Sadly, you don't. How was I supposed to know? I leave Sunday, damn it! Me and my co-worker look at each other. This bitch has lost it. Meanwhile, the kid in the back is still seated, unfazed by his mother. Poor kid is probably so used to her outbursts and shenanigans. I gotta get her out of here, this is stupid, I think to myself. I'm sorry, there's not much more we can do. <sighs> Let me speak with your manager. Is he here? I spoke with him earlier. Or are only you teenagers running this place? She wasn't here, but EM didn't need to know that. She most likely spoke with her actual boss. He usually gets in personal contact with big money clients, probably to grease his hands. I look over at my co-worker with a grin. He looks at me confused. Ma'am? I am the manager. My co-worker and I had a serious poker face. He knew I was full of shit. I wasn't even the assistant manager. EM scans me up and down. I thought she was gonna call out my bluff, but she didn't. Give me my things, I'm leaving. She collected her stuff and called her son over. 
who put his Pokemon away and stood by the door. We handed back her things and she spun around in a huff and walked away, only to turn around and grab her Starbucks coffee she had forgotten. I'm going to give this place a horrible review. Have a good evening, ma'am. You're always welcomed back. Sure enough, not long after, she gave us a poor Yelp review. 4. So I ski at a local resort where there aren't chairlifts but a kind of open pod where you hold your skis and snowboard and it takes you with a bunch of other people up. On this day it wasn't too crowded but there were people coming down the mountain regularly. I'm online and in front of me is a father holding his skis and his sons while his son was poking at the other people in line with his poles. The dad gets on with his kid and I get on with him. I get my pass scanned and get on the lift with them just as the doors close. For some context, my skis are rentals so I can't lose them or I have to pay back the cost of the skis and a fee for losing them. My skis are red and black fishers so nothing crazy but they are pretty nice. I'm leaning on the door. ED is against the other side with EK. EK is eyeing my skis while he has some honestly cooler yellow and white deltas. Now, these skis were much smaller than mine as EK was about 8 or 9, but still pretty small. Just like Maui from Moana, I see what's happening here. His skis are really cool. Can I get skis like that? Sure, EK. Whatever you want. He turns to me and I can already hear the bullshit coming. Okay, kid. How much for your skis? I'm not selling them. One, I'm renting them so they aren't mine to sell. Two, how am I going to get down the mountain without them? Three, your son won't fit in them. Oh, come on, dude. Your skis are way cooler than his. I'll pay you for the skis and I can just carry them down the mountain. EK has the widest fucking grin I've ever seen, and we're almost at the top of the mountain. I try to stall for time by saying maybe and talking about how much they would cost. The lift reaches the top and I get out with a quick, uh, nope and walked off with my skis in hand as fast as I could in ski boots. Dad, he's getting away! EK, I kid you not, comes up behind me and stabs me with the poles in his hands direct in the left ass cheek. And he did it hard. I dropped the skis and spun around while EK snickered. ED passed me and picked up my skis off the ground and walked away with his son in tow. I was dumbfounded. He literally just stole my fucking skis! I ran, god ski boots sucked sometimes, towards them at the mouth of one of the trails. As I run in slow motion towards the entitled assholes, and I'm freaking out thinking that they're gonna ski off with my shit. God, if you exist, you must really like me. The kid pulled on his dad's jacket as he put on his own skis. Dad, I wanna use my new skis. Now please, dad. The dad probably doesn't know much about skis with this mistake. Sure, kid. My skis were too big for him. He attempted to put on my skis, but his boots were too small. But he kept on trying. Just then, Ski Patrol comes over, somewhat confused. Sir, why do you have an extra pair of skis? Oh, uh, we, uh, we found them. We found these skis over there. Points to the Ski Patrol hut where Ski Patrol just came from. I can assure you that you didn't. That's the ski patrol cabin. The only skis over there are ours. <clears throat> EK spins around and sees me and is prompted to try and hit me again with the poles. Ski patrol sees him hitting me in the arm as I explain what happened. My lack of skis at the top of the mountain was evidence enough for her to give me back my skis and escort them down the mountain. I just got on my skis and made it to the bottom while trailing them the whole way down. 5. So a little backstory. Me and my family own a cottage in the Muskoka area of Ontario. We've owned it for years. This family used to live just down the road, maybe about a 15 to 20 minute walk. EK is entitled Kit, EM is entitled Mom, SF is Sweet Friend, EKS is Entitled Kid's Sister. Okay, so this story takes place about four years ago in the summer, so I was 15 turning 16. It was late at the time of this story, I believe it was around 11.30pm, so pretty late, 
and it was pitch black out, so no way you could walk down the road without lights. I was having a small party of four of my buddies at my cottage. I don't hang out with them unless I'm up north. This kind of thing would happen often at my cottage, because I don't have a way to travel to other cottages, so they would be nice and come hang with me. Also, we are only one of three cottages that has a beach on the lake. Okay, so here goes. E.K. walks through the unlocked back door. I go to check out who just came through the door because my entire family is asleep at this point. I see E.K. going through my freezer with his friend. E.K., what are you doing? I just wanted a snack, so I thought I'd help myself. No, that's not what my freezer is for, and we've already talked to you about going through our freezer. Fine. I'm still taking this freezy. Uh, no, put that back, and leave, you weren't invited here. But EKS is here. Okay, she was invited by me and SF to hang out and play some games. But I want to play. No. Fine. Then you can make EKS take me back home. No, I can't make her. Ask her if she can. Fine. He asks EKS, and she says no. What do I do now? Call your mom, then. Why in God's name are you walking down the dark road when you own two ATVs anyway? I didn't want to ride them tonight. My face palm. EM shows up about ten-ish minutes later after we're called. Here's where the fun really begins. Why can't I stay? EK, please just ask next time and I might be able to let you stay because my grandparents were very specific in saying I can only have three friends over tonight. EM then takes EK and puts him in the car. EM then comes to me and asks me the same question. I start to answer, but I only get out he just needs before EM says this. My son is the angel in our house. He deserves to hang out with you guys. Why can't he hang out with EKS? Well, first of all, he's not alone. Second of all, he just showed up at 11.30 at night without a word to anyone that he was coming. Fine. Since he can't hang out with you, EKS and her friend are coming home. Okay, that's your choice, but they were having fun. Truth be told, the party was kind of dying down anyway. But Mom, I was having fun. I don't care, your brother is coming home, so are you too. Okay, I'll see you all tomorrow for my birthday celebration. No, they won't. Good luck turning 16, jerk. Um, okay, I haven't done anything to you, and this is on your kid. Don't you dare talk about my angel like that! If he was such an angel, why didn't I let him stay? Wrong use of words on my part, not going to lie. I was just pissed at this point. EM gets in the car, then tried to hit me with her car before speeding off my driveway, flicking a large amount of gravel at me in my cottage, chipping the window I'm standing next to. The next day. No one shows up to my birthday celebration. It's nothing fancy, just some cake for the kids on the lake. My grandmother spent all the previous day marking the cake. It was really good, by the way. Eventually, SF shows up. I'm sorry I was late. They said they were coming, so I waited with them and they just didn't leave. I don't think they're coming. Okay, that's fine. They don't get any cake. Sucks for them. EM acts like this never happens, and I don't know how this affected my friends, but only SF still hangs out with me. I understand it was EKS's brother, but he's been a prick to me all my childhood, and I didn't understand how he could think this was okay. I still haven't seen EK or EKS in four years. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to The Impractical Proudness of Parents. Number one. Possibly. We'll see how it goes. I've gotten a number of requests over the past few weeks uh, to cover stories like these. I took a look at them and I thought, eh, others are doing them, I'm not going to bother. But I don't think anybody was tackling them quite the way I usually do them, so I figured I'll give it a shot. And there's some good stuff in there, so if you guys enjoy it, we shall certainly do more in the future. So, let me know what you like. Do the old thumb me up thing if you enjoyed it, that's always helpful. And we will see. Okay, and with that I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, Thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.